Psalm 107. We begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, O give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. We could camp on that verse till Jesus comes. We ought to be thankful. We ought to recognize that he's good and that his mercy endureth forever. Verse 2 said, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy, and gathered them out of the lands from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. Remember when you was in the wilderness of sin? Wandering, wandering around aimlessly. Aren't you glad he brought you out? Huh? And goes on to say that they found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. And he led them forth by the right way, that they might go to a city of habitation. All that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, and for his wonderful works to the children of men. For he satisfied the longing soul, and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the good testimonies. Lord, our hearts have been encouraged and been strengthened. Thank you, Lord, for our young people. Bless them as now uh, their meeting, and God bless their efforts. Those young people are under a lot of pressure. Help them. Help our uh, even younger ones, the children over on the other side. As they're being taught the Scriptures, may the Word of God find a wonderful lodging place in their heart. Lord, when they come to the age of accountability, they'll get saved at a young age. Now, Father, help us tonight to certainly honor you, to remember your goodness, and that your mercy endureth forever. Bless now, and we'll thank you for it, for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. In these verses, I want you to notice, first of all, the reason to worship. Verse number one. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. What a reason to worship him. We ought to worship him because he's good. He's a good God. He's never done anything but good. And we ought to worship him because he's a merciful God uh, and his mercy endureth forever. Uh, uh, that's the reason we ought to worship. In verse number two, we find that the redeemed are to worship. Uh, I'm glad we uh, saw some of that around here a few minutes ago. It said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he hath redeemed uh, from the hand of the enemy. Uh, can I say lost people can't testify to the goodness of God. Uh, the redeemed have to. Those that have been redeemed uh, out of the hand of the enemy. Uh, let them stand up and testify. Talk about the goodness of God and that his mercy endureth. Uh, then we find in verses 3 and 4, uh, or, I mean 3 through 6, there's a refuge from our warfare. Uh, we find in verse 3, And he gathered them out of the lands from the east, from the west, from the north, from the south, they wandered in a wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in, in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. Uh, uh, can I say, uh, the Lord called them out from everywhere they was, uh, from their warfares, from their uh, struggles. Uh, when they called on the Lord, he delivered them out of their distresses. Thank the Lord for that. In verse 7, we find the right way. Look what it says. And he led them forth by the right way, that they may go to the city of habitation. Can I say if there's a right way, it means there's a wrong way. A lot of folks are headed down the wrong way. It don't lead to the city of habitation. But thanks be unto God, there is a city. We spoke about it this morning, uh, where the saints of God will habitate forevermore. Uh, and then we find the rejoicing for the wayward. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness. Wouldn't it be wonderful if folks uh, quit cussing God and they'd start praising God for his goodness? Wouldn't it be wonderful if folks quit talking about the weather and about sports heroes and about politics and about all this stuff and they'd just start talking about the goodness of the Lord? Wouldn't it be wonderful that folks just praise God for his goodness? Uh, he goes on to say, and for uh, uh, the wonderful works to the children of men, I mean every sunset, every uh, sunrise, God did that. Hmm? 
Every flower that blooms, God did that. Uh, 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 every caterpillar that grows, God did that. Uh, uh, every worm that's made for a robin or a blue jay, God did that. Uh, God does all those wonderful things and nobody gives him credit for it. Hmm? Then in verse number 9 it says, And he satisfied the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Aren't you glad when you was longing and hungry, he come by and he filled you up with himself? Full of goodness, huh? Well, I'm interested in, in this chapter, you find the word out six times. In the Bible, you find out or a form of out 2,504 times. And so for a few minutes, I'd just like to kind of give you a little thought on out and about. Huh? Out and about. I'm glad he didn't leave me where he found me. I'm glad he brought me out. Huh? Can I say uh, what a blessing when he brought you out? Remember when you was in the depths of sin? Do you remember when you was uh, entangled and in bondage uh, to sin uh, and God came by your way and he didn't leave you there. He brought you out. Uh, look at verse 13. Uh, uh, the Bible says, Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble uh, and he saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of darkness uh, and the shadow of death uh, and break their bands in asunder. Uh, aren't you glad uh, he brought you out? Uh, you were in darkness. Now you walk in light. Uh, you were in sin, now you've been saved. Uh, what a blessing for the day. He came to where you was uh, and brought you out of whatever trouble you was in. huh? Aren't you glad he reached down that pit you was in and brought you out? I mean, he'd been justified to come down to where you was and say you deserve to be there. Hmm? He'd been justified to come by and say you're not good enough to be saved. But he didn't do those things. Uh, Brother Jack, he came to where you was uh, and he told you he loved you and he said he'd save you. When you called on him, he brought you out. He saved your never dying soul. Oh, isn't that a blessing? I'm glad for the day he brought me out. Hmm? Can I say this? Some he br are brought out. Can I say this? Some are called out. Hmm? Amen. Oh, some are called out. Can I say those that are born again have been called out to be a different people. We're to be a peculiar people. We're to be a royal priesthood, a chosen generation. Uh, we are to live above the rudiments and elements of this world. God didn't save you and leave you in that pit. Uh, he brought you out and called you out uh, to be a separate people so he could be your father and folks could see a difference. Uh, can I say this? Some are called out to serve. There are specific callings of service. God calls a preacher. Uh, we're living in a day and age where they're trying to once again make uh, uh, the, the pastorate a profession. Mm, can I say, I don't have a job. I have a calling. Mm, can I say this? If God doesn't call a man, a man can't do it. Mm, that's why so many of them quit. God didn't put them there. Mm, can I say, it's not for the faint-hearted. It's not for the weak-minded. It's for somebody who knows to look and trust in the Lord. Some are called out to serve. There are some that he calls to serve as uh, uh, evangelists, some missionaries, uh, some pastors. Uh, some are called to serve in their local church, uh, whether it be a Sunday school teacher or a deacon uh, or a treasurer or a secretary or a clerk uh, or somebody's called to serve uh, uh, keeping the church clean, uh, mowing the grass. I mean, there's all kinds of service that can be done. Uh, but can I say, uh, I've seen a lot say, Preacher, I want to do something, uh, but God didn't put it in their heart to do it. They didn't do it long, uh, but I've seen some said, I just want to do something for Jesus. Uh, Jesus opened the door, they did it, and they did it to the glory of God. Uh, why? Because God put that in their heart and life. Uh, there's some called to serve. Can I say this? There's some called out to be separate. Uh, he called us out to be a separate people. We're not to act like the world. We're not to look like the world. We're not to smell like the world. We're not to talk like the world. We're not to uh, worship like the world. We're not to be anything like the world. We're to be Christian, Christ-like. Can I say this? He called us out, uh, uh, called some out to be uh, uh, available for supplication. Can I say old-timers used to say there were some who were called to prayer. There's some people who were given to prayer. They didn't have the ability to teach. Maybe the personality to teach or the education to teach. They didn't have the desire to do a lot of things that other people can do. But the one thing they could do is pray. And they were given to it. 
And they would pray and pray and pray. And God did great things. My mind's reeling right now. I'm thinking of Charles Grandison Finney. Preached one revival meeting in upstate New York. Lasted 18 months and a million people got saved. What people don't talk about is weeks before Finney would ever show up to a campaign. There were two guys named Clary and Nash. Clary and Nash would go to the city and they'd walk around the city and they'd walk around the grounds where uh, the meeting was going to be held, around the church where the meeting was going to be held. Uh, uh, and many times uh, 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 they would get there early and stay late uh, 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 and would pray and pray and would be given to prayer. They'd go days without eating and days uh, without even speaking words. They would groan uh, and cry and uh, mourn, uh, asking God to show up. Uh, Many times while Finney was pe preaching, they would climb up underneath the platform, get there before anybody else get there, and they'd be underneath the platform praying, believing in order for God to move the, and answer their prayers, they'd, they'd come through Finney. Hmm? You say, what are you saying? I'm saying them million souls. Oh, Finney might have been an eloquent preacher, but the power came through Clary and Nash. Uh, I remember one time hearing a story about Charles uh, Haddon Spurgeon, that great preacher over there in London. Uh, uh, the Metropolitan Tabernacle would seat 10,000 people, and many times uh, members would stay home so lost people could come in and hear the gospel and be saved. Uh, and there was a, a, a contingent of Americans that went over there uh, uh, by ship to go over and meet the great Spurgeon. Uh, Moody was in the company, and some of the others, R.A. Torrey and some, uh, and he gave them uh, uh, the tour of the ta tabernacle, and he gave them a tour of everything and he came and he said would you fellas like to see how this place is heated uh, and they're thinking like you're thinking right now and like I'm thinking uh, 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 the boiler room to see what would heat this uh, uh, monstrosity of a building uh, and he took them right underneath the pulpit opened the door uh, and underneath the pulpit area there were 150 men already gathered and praying that God would do something in that place uh, can I say some are called to prayer I told you all Friday, it, it broke my heart. Of all the sessions down there, the one most needed was the prayer caucus, and it was the one that was empty. Yeah. People are interested in everything but prayer. Give us some prayer, warriors. Uh, some are called to prayer. Can I say some are called to share the gospel? Can I say not, by, not everybody has a personality when they can walk up to a total stranger and say, here, let me tell you about Jesus. But I thank God there are some that, are, are, that have that ability and God uses them to plant the seed of the Word of God. Uh, Amen. Can I say? There are some who are brought out. There are some who are called out. But unfortunately, there are some who get burnt out. The yeah. mm -mm. Bible says over there in 2 Thessalonians 3.13, But ye, brethren, be not weary in well-doing. Yep. Can I say you can get so busy serving God you can get burnt out? That's why Jesus told his disciples over there in uh, 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 Mark chapter 6, come into a desert place and rest for a little while. You know why we need to have revival meetings every now and then? Because we get burnt out. We need to be put back in focus. You know why it's good to have just a special service every now and then, just to uh, break things up? Because if you're not careful, you get burnt out. You know why sometimes Brother Doug says, hey, y'all just need to go on vacation? Because you need that. Hmm? I'm, I'm really, I'm tickled, Brother Kevin, and, and Smurfette finally going to get take a honeymoon. Going to get on a cruise ship, get coronavirus. <laughs> He's planned this thing. Haven't you heard about the one in Japan been docked for like six months, you know? Uh, yeah, 14, I mean, it's all free, man. And you guys, you guys are little anyway. You don't eat much, so they'll have plenty of food for you, huh? Be a blessing. I'm going to go. I'm glad they're going to go. Grand Turk's some of the most beautiful water I've ever seen. I'm glad they're going to go. They, they need that. And you need to get away. Miss Billy has to go to West Virginia. I don't know why anybody would want to go to West Virginia. But she has to go to West Virginia every now and then. Drink some of that spring water they got over there. Huh? It's good for. If you're not careful, you get burnt out. Now, I'm not talking about laying out. But sometimes it's good to just come apart for a little while. So you don't come apart at the seams. Are you listening? But some get burnt out. Uh, you can talk to preachers and some preachers and their preachers' wives. I mean, they're just burnt out. I mean, not every church is like our church. And a, lot, a lot of these churches, man, they, they're, they're tough. Baptists, got, they're tougher than shoe leather, man. They're hard to deal with. 
You can get burnt out. But can I say, you can do everything right. You can pray, read your Bible, come to church, pay your tithes, do everything you're supposed to. If you're not careful, you get to doing that so much and get into a routine, you just get burnt out. Mm -mm. That's why, I, I, that's why I, I like it when the, the big preacher shows up and does something special for us every now and then. Just keeps us jacked up, aren't you? Don't you like it? Can I say this? Uh, some rust out. Hmm? I know y'all from this part of the country, and we we had a wonderful mild winter. Thank the Lord for that. Can you imagine them salt truck drivers? They're all just busting it seemed about to die. They bought all that salt, and it's just sitting there, huh? Which is good because it keeps it off our cars. It's amazing. I go down south. You go down there and see cars 20, 25, 30 years old and look brand new because they don't have salt on the roads. Just beautiful, huh? And they don't look that way up here. Up here, salt gets involved, your car rusts out. Do you remember what Lot's wife was turned into? Pillar salt. Very impurities of her own self. And when people don't listen to God, don't get right with God, and they let iniquity we preached on this morning reign in their life, they start turning into the very impurities and they rust out. They're not as solid as they could be for Christ. And they rust out. There's nothing worse than a rusty Christian because they become a crusty Christian. You know what a crusty Christian is? Cantankerous. Somebody you don't want to be around. Hmm? Some rust out. I thought about this. Some are singled out. Some are singled out because of their stand. It's amazing. You can work a job, be so many employees in there, and you stand up and say something for Jesus. Everybody in that factory will know before the day's out. And you'll be singled out for your faith. People will point you out. Oh, there's that do-gooder. There's that, there's that Jesus freak. There's that. And they'll single you out. They'll make fun of you. They'll look for opportunities to try and put you on the spot for your faith. Hmm. It's amazing you can be a Bengals fan. They don't care. Now, that's something wrong. That, there's something they ought to make fun of you over. Huh? You ought to have more sense than that. I'm still waiting. They're going to they're gonna mess that first pick up. You know they're going to do it. Or, or, or if they get that quarterback from LSU, his arm will fall off before spring training. That's just, that's just the Bengals. Huh? But, but if you, you stand up for what's right, they'll single you out. Some are singled out for their faith and their stand. Can I say this? Some are singled out for their sacrifice. Can I say there are some people who give sacrificially and folks will single them out and say, boy, what a blessing. Look at what they've given and look at the lives they've touched. And then can I say this? Some are singled out for their scandal. Hmm? And the Bible tells us that for those that sow discord among the brethren, we're to single them out and mark them. Let folks know, hey, that's a wolf in sheep's clothing right there. Run from that booger. They'll mess you up. Some are singled out. And I thought about this. Some are out in left field. There's some people who don't have a clue about the Bible, but they're going to tell you everything about the Lord. Hmm? There are some people that believe some of the craziest things. And you can't convince them otherwise. Sure. Brother Ray, remember when we was on visitation down there in, in Owenton? And we went to, why did you take me at crazy lady's house? <laughs> went to that crazy lady's house. And we was out there on her front porch and she was crazy. And she told us she knew she was going to heaven because the butterflies touched her one time. <laughs> you had me at, why, Ray? <laughs> huh? Adventure. Yeah, it was an adventure. I'm still talking about it 25 years later, huh? I'm telling you, there's some nut jobs out there. Hey, every butterfly in the world could land on you don't mean you're going to heaven, huh? But there are people who believe crazy things out there. They're out in left field. Aren't you glad we got the Bible? Uh, aren't you glad we can say, thus saith the Lord? Uh, do you know how many preachers I've had to look at and say, give me chapter and verse for that? Hmm? So uh, they'll, they'll say something, you know, crazy. Well, give me chapter and verse for that. And then they look at me and get all red faced and act like I'm some kind of heathen. No. I don't care what you believe. Show me what the book says. 
Hmm? There's a lot of crazy preachers out there preaching a lot of crazy stuff They're out in left field. And tell me what thus saith the Lord. Hmm? There's some out in left field. Uh, you work with some folks out in left field. Uh, you try and tell them what the Bible says, and they look at you like you're crazy, and then they'll come up with some, you know, alien landed and Bigfoot showed up and all kinds of, and they believe that stuff. But you can say, but we've got proof Jesus was here, and this is what he said. Sure. we got proof he's not here anymore. The grave's empty. Right. Yeah. They, don't want to, they don't want to hear truth. There's some out in left field. Can I say this? Unfortunately, we can look in the Bible. There were some who were carried out. Ananias and Sapphira lied to the Holy Ghost, and they were carried out and buried that day. Listen, I'm glad God's long-suffering. I'm glad that He's patient toward us, word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But there are days in my flesh I wish God still acted like that. When people lied to God, boom, they was done. Hmm? Can I say, there's a payday someday. And there's some who've been carried out. Paul said, for this cause many among you are sickly and some sleep. In other words, some are in the grave. Some people go to an early grave or some people suffer a lot of sickness because they're not doing what God told them to do. Some get carried out. Hmm. It amazes me how some people have no problem missing church until they get to the point where they can't come to church and then they long to be in church. You better take full advantage of it. You know what I'm learning going on 57 years of age? You're not going to live forever. You better serve God while you can. Because there's coming a day you'll long to be able to and physically you can't. I'll never forget Brother Mike was talking about his daddy, Brother Roy Goodson. He caught him up. He noticed Brother Roy was kind of down. He says, what's going on, Dad? Brother Roy's health was failing. Brother Roy said, I'm sitting here feeling sorry for myself. He said, why, Dad? you still got some time ahead of you. He said, I'm feeling sorry for myself because of all them old people I used to chew out for not coming to church. He said, and here I am. I can't get to church. Hmm? Uh, you better take your full advantage of the things of God. You better do what's right. But there's some who are carried out. Then lastly, the saddest of all, there are some who are cast out. Can I say, one of the definitions of people dying and going to hell is they're cast out into outer darkness, separated from God, cast away from the very beloved one who died for them. That's a sad, sad thing, that there are some who are cast out. Well, I'm glad he brought me out, but I want to be in everything he's in are you listening I want to be a part of everything he's a part of and I want to do my part while he gives me strength to do it I wonder tonight you've been brought out been called out what are you doing for God he saved you to do something why don't you didn't ask him that Lord what would you have me to do the apostle Paul did that when Saul Tarsus got saved first thing he said Lord what would you have me to do the Lord told him what to do Lord, to give you something to do, friend. Hey, it may not be what somebody else is doing. Who cares? If he tells you to do something, do it. Do it to the glory of God. Give it the very best that you can do. Just do what you can do. And God will get glory for it. Folks say, what do you think you're doing? I'm doing what Jesus told me to do. He brought me out of a horrible pit. He changed my life, and I just want to do what I can do for him. The Bible said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You do that? The Bible said, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness. Do you do that? Well, there's so much more we can be doing, isn't there? He brought us out, so why don't we shout it out sure. until he comes back for us. Amen. All right, I'm done. Brother Ray, you come. Get a song of invitation. Don't sing butterfly kisses either. Come get a song of invitation. You ever heard that song? We found out Miss Sidney was going to be a girl. Miss Annette got me that song. I cried like a baby. Uh, now she's going to be 22 years of age, huh? Maybe tonight you need to come and say, Lord, what can I do for you?
Maybe tonight you just want to come and, and tell the Lord how much you love him. Maybe during this invitation you need to go to somebody and tell them how much you love them. I don't know. But let's all stand. They've picked out a song. Folks are praying. Let's just pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for calling us out one day. Lord, we deserve to be in hell with our back broke. But I'm glad I'm not going. But Lord, help us not to get burnt out, stressed out, cast out, carried out. God, help us to be involved in everything you're involved in. God, help us to let folks know how great Jesus is. Now, Lord, bless. There may be somebody really struggling with something here tonight. Help them, Lord. Bring them out of it. Do something great for them. Maybe somebody needs to go to somebody tonight and tell them they're sorry. They've talked about them. Or maybe somebody needs to go to somebody tonight and tell them, hey, I just want you to know I appreciate you. Or I uh, want you to know you've been a blessing. Maybe somebody needs to come tonight and say, Lord, what would you have me to do? I want to do something for you. Lord, we know that you said, Seek and you shall find, ask and you shall receive. So, Lord, help folks tonight. Lord, we'll bless you for what you do. Thank you for the redeemed of the Lord saying so tonight. Lord, get glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks to listeners like you, IBC has had over 100,000 views on our YouTube channel. If you haven't already, subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.